All right, we are live. Let's hope. Uh, well, I don't know if this one's going to last as long as the last one, but let's hope that uh, it doesn't crap out at the end. So, yeah, that's a good thing to hope for. I'm just going to ramble a little bit for like a minute and a half or so, wait for anyone who's going to come in to jump in. So, hello. Today we're going to be, I'm going to be showing what I think is a decent method for painting white uh, clothes. Now, I've never actually done this. Good afternoon. I've never actually done this before, so we'll see how that goes. But I was reading a lot the last couple of weeks about how, um, about how guys who paint minis for like D and D and Warhammer and stuff do white. I'm going to try to use that general technique. I'm just going to wait a little bit longer here. Get get the stream open on my computer I got on the side, so I can see chat and all that. And then I'll get started. All right, it's up. Okay. So first thing is you want a base coat in like an off-white or a tan. Uh, this is the always. Yep. Always ways. This is like an off-white or a tan. Uh, I think I went a little bit too light with this base coat. I did this. So there's a story here. I did this a couple days ago. And then I popped this the figure into the refrigerator to keep the um, keep the oils mostly moist for today. That was the example. It's you can see my first shot at it was far too dark, but that'll be hidden under the shield, so you won't see that. But the general idea is you get a you get a tan or an off white, and you base coat it, and then you build the white on top of that. But during my uh, trial here, I found that I was having a really hard time building up a good white, a good like solid white coat under, um, hold on, I just got a notification, all right, under, uh, or on top of fresh paint, because I did all of this at one time, like in a 30 minute sitting, so I decided to white coat, or uh, do my off-white coat on everything that needs to be white, except the shield, because I need to approach that slightly differently, it's a little bit different material and probably would have been prepared in a little bit different way. This is likely some kind of uh, canvas or wool, and the uh, the shield is painted on. It's a painted color. It won't be the original color. So, yeah, just it's got the off-white. The off-white is a big glob of white with a little dab of burnt sienna, and then just add white till it looks like a decent shade. And once I add the white on, if, it, if I still think it looks a little bit too uniform or like the shadows aren't coming out enough, which I don't th know that will be necessary because I think it looks, this model is big enough and the, the, the creases are sharp enough that it does, it creates shadows pretty well. It's not like a 35th scale figure. You really have to paint on um, your, your, sh your shades and stuff. But if the white doesn't come out quite enough, I can always darken my base coat a little bit and, and add in some deeper shadows for like around the arms. I will note one thing I messed up on the last one, uh, the chainmail stream. I did not do that little bit there. I haven't figured out quite how I'm going to approach that because because I'm obviously pretty deep into the uh, tunic here. Can't just go dry brushing that without destroying this. So that's going to be a, a task. I'm not sure how I'm going to approach it. But yeah, All right, there's a couple people watching, so I'm going to go grab my paintbrush and get started building this white. It will be a task. So we're using um, just awful low quality, just like $10 for a set uh, Hobby Lobby oils right now. Uh, you can make them work. I would love to be using like the uh, I'd, I'd to long or whatever it is that the figure guy, that the like serious figure guys often use. That's a bit outside my budget right now. And that's a dirty white. Oh, fantastic. This is a white, this is the tube of white I use for mixing. So it gets, so it's got a bunch of remnants from, uh, it's got a bunch of remnants from when I did my 16th scale machine gunner. 
I gotta get my gotta find my other tube. But if I have time and I manage to have this stream not conk out at the last minute, uh, like like it did, uh, however long ago the last one was, I my plan is to just show like the preparation for um. That's better. The preparation for a wood base for a um, a wood grain paint. I did show it on an old live stream with my friend. That was the uh, that was the Sonograph Fatsoid two five one where I did the benches. It's very similar, but this where is my sh where's the shield? Where did it go? The shield on this model actually has some grain molded in so it will be less of an emphasis on a you won't have to build all the grain from the brush you can you can use a lot for the brush but then the final touch will be um, a good wash good dark wash Hobby Lobby is great it's just the, there's a definite quality difference in oil paints and um, the master's touch stuff that they always sell is definitely on the low end. Uh, definitely on the low end. Let's pick a good brush here. That's not my decal brush. That would be unfortunate. I don't really want to get a new decal brush anytime soon. So on the announcement, I also said there'd be some updates in this video. Um, not, they're not updates so much as just on, like what is coming. We are rapidly approaching Thanksgiving break, which begins Friday next week. So after a very long drive home, anywhere between 8 and 13 hours, depending on how the roads are. Um, I have an entire week to basically do nothing but build models. And while I want to get a lot of progress done on uh, Ameri the Cats, the series, I should be able to finish at least two standard videos. A Airfix 76 scale World War I mail tank and a... Uh, 48 scale Japanese captured I-16 at the very least. I, I also have like a, a C-Fang that might get done, but probably won't. So there will be normal videos on the channel again soon-ish, hopefully, if everything goes well. The reason I use cardboard instead of some official, uh, some more professional thing for a palette uh, especially with these lower quality oils, you have a lot of you have a lot of separation between, like the 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 I guess you could call it pigment and the like linseed, and the cardboard soaks a lot of that up, and it makes it um, um excuse me, it makes it much less of a of a problem when you go to paint. So hopefully, you can see a difference between the base coat and the final color here. Oh, well, there's a bit of one. I might not have let this I might I might not have let the oil set long enough. That would be unfortunate. I have no idea if that's coming up on camera or not. The resolution on my other uh my other computer is pretty terrible, and when you're when on the on the screen of on my phone screen here, it always comes out awful while streaming. It's more meant to give an you an idea of what is in frame than anything else. To be honest, it's pretty useless for making sure your stream is good or you, you're, you know, that's why I have the other one open. It's like, I, I can see chat here uh, on the phone screen, but that's about all it's good for.
I was originally going to do a, to, to show all the white painting today, but just based on the small panel I'm doing right now, I'm thinking that would take a while to, to actually finish. So I'll probably do a fair bit of this tunic, maybe the front, and maybe hit these top surfaces with the first coat. Just judge based on this right now, this is going to be a multi-coat thing. I'm going to have to let it sit for a couple of days and firm up a little bit and then come back and do, do another. I'll tell you though, it's, it's a lot nicer to paint white clothes on 35th scale. Just airbrush it white and you're pretty much fine. You just weather on top of it and everyone kind of ignores shadows This also might be a technique that works better. Again, the only like decent resource I could find on this when I was trying to figure out how to do it so I don't botch it on screen on stream was uh, some like D and D and and Warhammer mini painter mini mini painter guys. And uh, they, theirs came out really well, but they're also using acrylics uh, almost exclusively. And like the games workshops acrylics where you can get like pretty much any color has a full range of shade. They have like they have charts and stuff where you get your base color and it's very simple to get your highlight one, shadow one, and then your deep, deep your deep highlight or your deep shadows and your dark your bright highlights. I don't know what it is if it's the scale or how the uh those figures are always slightly just proportioned wrong, but it seems like a much a, a much larger value difference looks just looks better. You can get away with more with those than you can with like real figures. I don't. I'm, it sounds pretentious, kind of real figures with like uh, models over mini minis. Um. I don't know what it is, but like they had a f some of the ones I was looking at had had like a full range for, of value where you could find like on the on a white tunic that was supposed to be like a slight off white you could find like a dark brown in some spots all the way up to white on the highlight to like titanium white on the highlights and it looked great. I don't know. I'm gonna be doing. Uh, some hopefully depending on how some things go i might be doing some mini painting i don't know if it'll be a stream or videos but i'm getting into bolt action the tabletop the tabletop war game bolt action uh, and that's been interesting both learning to play and kind of adapting to painting minis slightly differently than i'd paint you know standard models that looks all right again I don't know it'd be really it'd be really unfortunate if none of this is coming up on stream but it looks pretty good in real life it's just a little bit of shade it's unified how some of the uh, some of the uh, problems I was having with you could like see through into the background it's kind of blending all that together I do think I definitely will let it sit out of the fridge so it actually sets for a day or two. Let it get pretty well set, but nothing that you can't loosen up with a dampened dampened brush in in uh, spirit white uh, thinner, and then get it mostly set and then hit it again with either this white or maybe let it set all the way and then pick off the, 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 the brightest parts with a very bright white acrylic. 
like I've had good success in my models with uh, the Vallejo, the Vallejo flat white. That's a pretty good acrylic white. So I might pick out the very highest peaks with that. Yeah, right, right there. It's not set up quite. It's not set up enough to really get that looking good in this spot I'm at right now. Just kind of moving paint around. I know when I first launched this, or when I did the first stream, I said these would be like weekly or bi-weekly, and then I immediately failed the next week and for like a month and a half later to deliver. Um, this time, it actually should be, I'm not going to say weekly or promise bi-weekly, bi but it should definitely be more frequent. Um, uh, once... Once final exams are done, we have like a month off and I'll be back at, at work probably uh, for the, most of that time. So it'll be back to the, to the kind of schedule I had during the summer. And it's a lot easier to just whip out the paints and do a figure than it is to get all my stuff set up and start recording a normal model video. So that will probably see some more figure work being done. And then next, once next semester starts, once we get back from Christmas break or winter break or whatever you prefer, um, then, then I have, so right now I have a 18, 18 credit semester, which is a lot, especially for my first semester at university. Uh, I'm dropping down to 15, and a couple, of, and and like two of those are pretty easy, from what I've heard. So I'll have more time in general next semester. So I, the point is, I'm going to do regular streams, um, and they will go back to Saturday. Uh, the fact that this one is today is a aberration. Um, I had a big paper due last night that I didn't get enough work done on at a more ex, uh, a more efficient time it's actually looking pretty good you don't really need the deep the deep deep shadows I might make a small slightly deeper one just for these most extreme areas like beneath this stitching and in these dark folds but just the slight variation between like this cream I made and the white it's looking pretty good in real life and I hope it's coming up on the stream if not, then I'm uh, just I'm just moving my brush, and you guys probably aren't seeing anything, which would be unfortunate. Well, I've, then I think I'm insane until I po until I post the finale video for this, and it's got the glory shots. The good news is one. Well, one part of good news is, um, I'm pretty sure that cats will come out um, relatively soon. I was looking. I was checking my logs and looking at what I already have recorded. And just a little update for anyone who cares about Amer about my my the series thing. Um, I was. I have finished. The F4F, that, if you want a sneak peek of it, open my channel, like, uh, open open my channel's homepage in another tab or something, and that F4F you see, that F4F that you see in black and white as my channel art is the F4F for the series. I finished the Bearcat, and I have... I literally have a flat coat and final weathering to do on the F6F. And I will be finished with the F3F, F5F, and I believe uh, I'll have good progress on the F7F by um, the end of Christmas break. 
So once those all get done, I just have to record the season finale, edit, edit, unless I'm forgetting something right now, because I don't, ha I don't have like a list in front of me or anything, uh, edit, edit the season finale, and then at some point uh, in, in early 2020, the goal is to have a weekly, a weekly upload of normal full time-lapse build videos for like nine weeks straight, and I'll upload at the same time each week so it'll be like a like a normal show so I don't know how much I, I don't know if I've actually talked about the full I know I bring up the cats project a lot but I don't know if I've ever actually described it on I know I haven't done it on stream because I've only done one stream since coming up with, since settling on the idea but yeah that's looking pretty good I'm pretty good at, if I do say so myself. I do definitely need to come back in and highlight the very uh, edges in, in a couple days. So then if I have time... Well, I won't. I won't have time because I'm going to be painting white for the next like hour and a half after I stop this stream. I'm just doing the tunic on on stream. But um, I guess next stream I'll do wood grain and hopefully. Well, let's see. I'm not 100 percent sure. I will definitely do some work on the shield. Then other other things that could get done are the like canvas straps I don't actually know if this is canvas or leather I should probably figure that out the strap that holds the shield on and uh, maybe tackle the red maybe ta tackle the, temp the, the Templar stuff red's a tough color to paint especially with oils it's a tough color in general but it's one of those things that shading it has a tendency to just make it look weird because it's very easy it's hard to get a faint red you you get it you try for a faint red and you end up with a pink and it just looks bizarre honestly i might have i might just because i think this would simplify things and come up with a good result i might just abandon uh oils for the red part and bust out my games workshop uh paints I have some reds I have some I have uh, a run of their reds that looks pretty good that I used for uh, a couple space marines I did mostly for fun I don't actually play Warhammer uh, it costs too much but I am pretty into the lore and when I can get them cheap I like to paint the minis well I've started painting the minis It's one of the reasons I've started playing bolt action. Besides the fact that it's act that it's more closely related to my interests, being World War II and everything, um, it's a lot cheaper than uh, Warhammer. It's still not cheap necessarily. I don't think there's such thing as a cheap tabletop game unless you're taking like mechanics from a from a codex or something and just you just like electing to use um, to use like cardboard cutouts or something instead of actual figures which you could do if you really wanted to play the game i guess i used to have this book this uh well i didn't ha i didn't have this book but i i, I basically owned it i was in a, it was in a state of constantly in my possession because i don't i'd always check it out of the library and then just keep renewing it, and then turn it in late, and then check it out again as soon as it got back into the system. It was a book about wargaming from like the late 70s, or maybe it was old, I don't know exactly when, it was old though. And they kind of mentioned that, it was basically a book for designing your own war games, and they had an interesting module, it was like uh, designing like armored combat, and people were like using little cardboard squares and stuff 
seem like a pretty good pretty good way to s save the money it looks like it is lightening the area up a little excellent that means it's doing exactly what I'd like it to be Dude, my hands my hands are real shaky for some reason That is a nice point about fi about a figure this large is I can have the shaky hands going on and not not have it be as big a problem. Now, if I was doing the face, which thank goodness that's already done, then it'd be a whole other story. But something with nice big areas like this, the shaky hand isn't the end of the world. So I, this probably isn't, what I'm about to describe probably isn't going to be as exciting to any of you guys. I have incredibly shaky hands. I go back and forth. My hands are usually okay, but sometimes they're, they get weird. I think a big problem I'm having is the way that this base is, is not the most comfortable to hold. So this left, my left hand is getting kind of weird. But, um. If I can get what I done when I think I can get can get done during uh, two weeks from now when I'm when I'm off on break and I can get those videos out before December or before the end of December, there's every possibility that my channel will have another milestone based on how many subs I get from a well from a well received video. Um, I should hit three thousand if I can get two or three more, two or three more in, two or three more videos posted, I mean, and then if one of them is a shocking, shocking success, like my Stuka video that just kind of blew up, um, that'll be even, it'll be better. Tell you what, if I, if it keeps going as relatively well as it has, I might have to, uh, I, I should probably start scheming for a 5,000 sub special it'll it won't happen I'd be shocked if it happened in 2020 but I have noticed that growth seems to is scaling so which I guess makes sense with how what I understand of the algorithms is but as I get more subscribers I seem to get subscribers a lot faster even with fewer video uploads. So I guess it's not impossible that I'd break five. I'm sitting here waiting for like a hundred. Uh, that's the struggle. That's the struggle. I, I was waiting for a hundred. It's a big feel. It's a big feel when you break a hundred. If you... I dig around for my blog that I don't actually use and haven't touched since early 2018 and just today removed the links to from my YouTube homepage. Um, my, my channel was created with the intent of it being a model channel in like mid 2015 and it was late 2017 that I was talking about almost breaching 100 subs. I'm still not exactly sure what, because it was weird. I, I was claw, clawing up like one or two subscribers per video for literally months. And then suddenly, I didn't even have a big breakout video or anything. I just suddenly got like 150 subscribers relatively quickly. And I don't, I still haven't exactly figured out what happened. I don't know if I got like a shout out somewhere and I just didn't see it or something. I, honestly, and that's not impossible to be fair because honestly, and this might be a surprise, I don't, I'm not that connected to other modeling channels. Like I, I occasionally watch like Plasmo and Skeleton. I pretty much religiously watch anything Rebels at Cloud Nine puts out, but I'm also 
you know, we also chat over the email and stuff. Um, but everybody else, and th there's a lot of model channels, and I'm just not, I just don't watch most of them. It's, I guess it's not impossible, and it would explain it. But it, it is currently a mystery why that, why I got that sudden jump. However, once you get over 100, then it feels really fast. Once you get over 100, I think you get some kind of fate, you get some kind of boost for uh, search recommendations. Because once I once you cross that threshold, you grow a lot faster. just because it makes me sad, not gonna lie. Uh, it's kinda like how I, sometimes I cannot physically force myself to watch Supercross uh, while, when it airs, just because it fills me with great sadness. And it looks beautiful and I just, it would be physically painful to watch, to watch that video, to be like, ah, I can't, I can't even go like fondle my, my oh no. Is the stream, is the stream crashing already? I'm looking at it on my computer and it looks like the stream's crashing already, but my computer's also pretty trash, so it might just be a computer end. I don't know. Okay, just had to refresh. Let me refresh my computer then. Alright. I hope it's, I hope it's not, this isn't signaling the end of the, uh, stream because last time it got about an hour before it decided to crap out all right it got better well fingers crossed that that keeps up then Just about finished for now, at least the front part of that is. Now one positive thing about these cheap oil paints is that they seem, they do dry. But for the issue, the specific issues I'm having right now, it's a pretty big plus. Because that means, instead of waiting like two weeks to be able to finish off these highlights, I should be able to come in in like three days and get a real strong white right on the highest peaks obviously oh man I'm re oh it's coming up fuzzy but still there for me so fingers crossed that people can still see it I don't know what I don't know why I have these problems with these streams. I don't. It must be something about my school's internet. Cause when I first start streaming, both times now, eyes like it looks to be doing right now again, which is. I can't think of. It's got to be something with the internet. I can't think of what it would be though. If they have really weird about that is we usually have um, pretty good speeds. Like my upload time for, yeah, it's definitely the internet. My upload time is incredible and my download time's not bad either here normally. So I'm thinking, I'm wondering if there is some kind of limit and streaming for much longer than a half hour is hitting that limit. Cause I'm looking at it and it is, it's not great. At least on my other screen. I never figured Yeah, I might have to explore that. For people who aren't that guy, Edgy Rome is a thing that a lot of the schools here in the States do. It's it's just an internet. little dump there. Since the stream is just dead now, pretty much, I am going to call that, let's see, I did, I showed the painting, I showed some painting, I talked about future videos. Stream is bad, so I don't feel like showing the other things I was going to show that were just kind of like, 
things I'm working on right now. So I guess I'm going to call it, I'm going to plan these, I'm going to start planning these streams to not go longer than I will who uh, watch the stream after it gets uploaded for how weird and choppy and bad it is. I honestly don't even know if we'll be able to be talking right now because it looks like it's